Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we're gonna try to get our four LED setup controlled in some way by the press of this button. So I'm first going to go onto the breadboard and install this button into say, I don't know, pin three. I'll merge this and let's have a look. We just place it like so across the bridge we're gonna actually need to have a powered up red rail on the other side. So, in you go, son. Come on. Surprisingly hard. There we go. Didn't really upset the order of our LEDs. Um, so we're gonna need to go into one leg of the button from the red rail. And in the other leg, well, we're going to need to sort of um, ground that. Now, we can use any resistor and put that resistor in the GND right here. Now, if we did a straight up wire instead of this resistor, what would happen would be a short circuit, which would be pretty dramatic. The Arduino would go off. Not good. So now we can simply take that leg into zero one two three and there we have it i don't know this is a bit of a lot of a wire maybe i can just bring it down like that there you have it so now that we've installed a button time to code it in let's merge that here we have our led panel code i guess we can add a button int button equals to three we can pin mode button as input and decide what we want to do well let's just as a test case Turn on all the, um, let's, I don't know, turn all the LEDs on if the button is pushed. How are we going to do that? Well, simply inside this loop, we can forever check if digital read of the button. If that equals the high, then open bracket, close bracket right there we can do whatever is inside these two curly braces. So the, here we can have digital right LED. This digital right should turn orange, I think. The digital right, yeah. LED one high. So we can turn all of them on and make that four, three, two, one. And if we don't turn them on, I guess we can do an else statement, open bracket, enter. The new bracket just gets drawn for us nicely and we can I guess copy all of that right there and just turn them all to low. Now this is just a test case. We can do a lot more fun stuff. So let's upload that and see what happens. Uh, what's not declared button. We're gonna need a U. All right, eh. and for some reason, LED one is just left out of the party. LED one low, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Let's just, uh, I don't know, for curiosity's sake, I will test this. 
Make it 5,000. Maybe the LED died for mysterious reasons, but that LED, if it comes on... All right. Oh. Now it works. I have no idea. Okay. As you can see, sometimes the errors we get just don't seem to make much sense. So, let's see what else we can do with it. I guess we can create a Boolean. Um, and I think we can call this Boolean random. We can call it rand states. And we can call that equals to true by default. Um, and then inside this if statement here, we can just use that to change this rand state. So we can say rand state equals to exclamation mark rand state. Now in C, Arduino, and a lot of other languages, this guy right here actually makes a true statement false or false statement true. So right now, when we press the button, rand state is going to switch from true to false and from false to true. So we're going to need a separate if statement right here. Um, and I guess, you know, for simplicity's sake, we can just um, copy this if, if rand state double equals to true, then we can random zero comma two and copy this guy over all the highs. And if not, well, if not, then I guess we can just turn them high. So this, in effect, is going to give us um, two potential states. The way that I see it is if I hold a button down, all the LEDs are going to dim at the moment because if they're randomly turning on and off, but they're doing this at like thousands of times per second, um, that's going to be imperceivable. So we're going to need like a delay, a small one. Let's have a look A if this compiles. If rand state double equals to true. True was not declared. Well, I guess we can always try one and zero for true and false, but does Boolean work? Would true turn blue? Nope. I don't know. Let's try this. Well, clearly, one and zero seem to work for true and false. So all the lights are on and this makes them random. That is pretty, tr pretty terrific. And we can make it. Oh, and just to make things interesting, imagine that we had some sort of delay variable and we call that int delay. Delay equals to int, I guess we can call it dy for delay. And we can make that start at 500. And we can delay dy, but we can also, while pressing the button, make dy equals to dy minus 10. So that's going to decrease the delay. So the longer you hold the button, the faster the blinking is going to go. Let's have a look if that works. I 
think so. And eventually, the DUI has hit zero, and essentially that creates an error, which leaves us in a still state. So when DUI gets negative, um, we have something interesting happening. So we can also have some other way of handling that and just say if dy equals to zero, if dy double equals to or is less than zero, then you set it dy equals to 500 again. And let's try this again. We can try, I don't know, see if the delay is going to get smaller and smaller. And I think it should continue from that sort of high speed switching, high speed switching, high speed switching, high speed switching, flying, fast switching, and now we're back to the half a second. So there you go. It works pretty well. Now, in case you wanted to see that in action, we can do something called serial.print or serial dot, we need to begin the serial. Now this allows us for Arduino to receive a message, essentially. It allows us to receive a message from the Arduino. So the message that we can receive, for example, could be the present state of the variable dy. So the present state of delay. So in order to do that, we just simply, while this is all happening, as the delay is being executed, we can serial print len, ln stands for printed in the new line, dy. So right now, after we upload this, I think semicolon, after we've uploaded this, we can have a look right here. So it prints 500, this is our present delay. So we had to press on here, that's the serial monitor. And as I push this, you're gonna see the delay falling. And eventually it's gonna fall down to something pretty quick. And the, 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 the laser, you know, this, this is happening ever so quicker as we move towards zero. So right now there's like a tenth of a second between delays and watch this and we're back I think at 500. Now we could have done something that I consider cooler. If it's less than zero, we could have kept it at five. So, or we could have even said, if it's less than five, just make it five. And I think this would have worked all the way down. So one more time, we click on that. And the delays between just get exponentially briefer. We're waiting for half a second initially. Now we're down to a third of a second. Um, I reckon, and see, you can sort of pause it. I lifted my hand. I think it does the auto scroll, so you should be able to see the bottom. And this crazy blinkiness is happening, and it stays at five. That's pretty cool. And I think five is perhaps a bit too fast, but I like this effect. Okay. So that will be all for that you have in this tutorial. 
learned how to, one, install a button, two, use it to control some LEDs, and then we have looked at um, uh, an internal variable into the program that's going to control the delay as well as the random effects of individual LEDs. So in the next tutorial, we are going to install multiple buttons and they're going to control what a little buzzer initially and potentially a little speaker does. See you then.